Hiya folks, we'll let that all workshop. Welcome to this here all part review of the good, the average, and the ugly. Well, we'll leave that accent there for a bit. In this video, I'm going to be shining the spotlight here shown left to right on the oil safe pump, the Draper oil pump, and this random cheap pump that seems to pop up everywhere. This video is going to be a straightforward review of the three oil pumps, but there's two things that happen to me that allows me to make a decent point. I think that is the crux of why you might care about an oil transfer pump. The rear diff oil on a Defender is supposed to be changed about every 24,000 miles. I do it every two years or about 10,000 miles. But on opening the diff, I found this. Water contamination. All the driving I've been doing since the last oil change was on roads. The second thing was that as I was getting some video footage for this review with this POS pump, spoiler alert, this happened. Did you miss it? And now how about more slowly? That's right, one of the ears snapped off and is now floating around in my diff. And this is the bit. Although actually this is the other ear which I snapped off to see if it floated in EP90. It doesn't, which means instead of being able to drain the oil to remove the piece, it's now sunk into the sump of the diff, which is lower than the drain plug, so the only way to get it out is by removing the diff entirely. The first issue highlights how you should be regularly inspecting and replacing oils if necessary, not just by the book or by the service schedule. And the second point shows you need a reliable pump to be able to do this without f***ing up your vehicle. My philosophy, and I learned this from Land Cruisers, is that if maintenance is easy to do, you are more likely to do it. Hence why I now have a video reviewing oil pumps. There is a third reason, and that is that changing oil is messy, which adds to the cleanup time, which adds to the burden of you deciding whether to start the job in the first place. So cleanliness is also an important factor. Back when you were an early Defender owner in your heathen ways, you would just use a squeezy bottle with its spout. But there isn't enough room to tip high enough for it to flow out, and EP90 is pretty thick, so it takes about 10 minutes of squeezing, times two diffs, transfer box, gearbox, that's 40 minutes of squeezing. And whilst even though my forearms are now the size of tree trunks, it does look odd with my scrawny legs, and it's also a friggin' pain. Okay, let's get this ugly mother fudger out of the way. I've done about eight oil changes with this pump, so I've got a bit of experience. It's got to the point where it's just leaking everywhere. It's a pain, I've had to modify it. I just keep it in this bag, because it just, it's disgusting. There's no way to keep it clean. And now because the wings have snapped off, it's dead to me. It's got one of those fittings that's supposed to be universal. It's not gonna fit onto this one, no chance. So I've got to keep another bottle around that I can screw it onto. Or other attempt to screw onto, I've never found an oil bottle that fits this pump, or rather never fa this pump has never fitted any oil bottle. It's supposed to be universal, and it just it's just always cock on. And at this point now, something has gone wrong inside the pump. It just does this. After about three pumps, it just goes everywhere. It's utterly pointless. And then when you try and put the thing at the top here, it squidges that load more oil. There's no way of draining it back in. It just creates the most epic mess. I've had enough. This thing is relegated to the bin. It is no more. It is dead to me. The review of it ends here. Don't even bother. This is the Draper 23242 multi-purpose oil pump. One litre capacity. Now I call it average because it's not going to do EP90 through those small pipes. But it's not too bad. I use this for the gearbox. The hooked spout is really useful. Uh, it will stay put and when you put it up there it's got a non-return valve so the, the fluid doesn't leak back. Which is brilliant. The spout also fits nicely back in the bottle so any drips go back into the bottle. 
and uh, the pumps are relatively easy to use and uh, with MTF94 it's not too not too strenuous. I'm just going to digress a little bit about draining draining the R380 gearbox. You know I talk, I tend to talk about the uh, cross member on the 300 TDI quite a bit and uh, this is where it becomes an issue really is getting this oil out. The oil there is going to hit straight from the drain plug down onto the cross member so I uh, tend to use a milk bottle cut out and it seems to drain quite nicely you can direct it down into your into your pan and then afterwards you can wedge it in but anyway the hook spout is really useful in this uh in this situation because you can put it up there and and have a go at the pump quite roughly and it's not going to fall out i mean the other pumps um wouldn't you know you need a hook on there because it's up and over and uh i've done this before with um I used to do it with ketchup bottles that you could fit up and squeeze in through the hole, but this pump's made the job a lot easier and it gets a little bit oily. Now you can wipe it up pretty straightforwardly. I mean, most of the, when I talk about, you know, these things getting a bit leaky and a bit oily, is the fact that you want to put this away and then bring it out the next time. And if it's going to accumulate dust and grot and stuff, so the cleaner you can keep it, the better, you know, better condition it'll keep it for next time. Uh, and keeping you know the contamination out of the oil really you just want to pick this thing off the shelf and get into the vehicle and just start filling it up and um, this one's pretty good for that so that's why I've kind of rated it as average it's got its place I use it for the gearbox only certainly wouldn't be able to hold up to the EP90 ladies and gentlemen welcome to the main event this one's got a bit of a workhorse kind of job to do. It's got to replace the front diff, the rear diff, and the transfer box, which is about seven to eight litres in one session. Honestly, it's not that cheap, but it's got really nice action in the pump. It's quite a big thing. It's got a non-return ball valve in the end of the spout there, which fits in just like with your Draper one, and it's got a bit of a gauze there. So, And then there's an O-ring seal in the top there as well, so it will seal up. Really easy to remove the uh, remove the container. The thread's nice and coarse. You only need to twist it a couple of times. And then the pump itself, the the pickup pipe's got a sleeve, so you can have different different heights of of container. And there's an O ring up there as well. Gives it a nice seal. And of course, it's measured in metric, thank God, and also American Freedom units because it's made in America. And uh, there it is. Oil safe. You get different size containers. This is a three litre one. And you also get different caps as well. So you've got the pump one like this. You can get different colors for color coding. And uh, you can take the pump out of this and then put on a blank. So the idea being you'd have multiple containers. So you could have EP80 W90 for the rear diffs and 75 W90 for the transfer box, different containers. And then you can just swap the pump over between them potentially. Um, Save so you having to buy two pumps and just swap it over. So just as quick as it can be really. And then you don't have to because you don't really worry about contaminating with those oils are so similar you wouldn't worry about contaminating necessarily it is a bit unstable but hasn't got any oil in the pipes have got this spring all the way down which stops it kinking which is beneficial it's nice and thick as well so it takes ep ep90 and there's an extra spring around the the top here so it doesn't kink and kind of kink over at the top there and of course nice wide neck easy to clean it out Whoa, slow down, Speedy Gonzalez. You've got to put oil in it first. And now you're actually going to see me using this pump to fill up my two diffs and the transfer box in real time. There's YouTube chapters down below, so you can just skip ahead if you want to. And I've got a couple of points I've got to pick out here. So the oil coming out the front diff here is uh, really dark because it's got contamination from the swivel housings that means the inner swivel housing seal isn't great and i've got magnetic drain plugs in uh, in the axle casings which i fitted a couple of couple of years ago and it's just handy for seeing the kind of these aren't standard these are from discovery twos so i get yourself a set of these and you'll see what comes out of your diff so let's get on with the show the ambient temperature when i'm doing this is about 11 degrees i could have Put the oil, put the oil in uh, some hot water to to make the pumping easier. But uh, I elected not to. I'm doing it raw. I 
as you can see I'm putting my back into it it's taken a bit of effort to get this oil to flow but this is this is real time this is how long it takes and the amount of effort I mean the, the real benefit of having in the longer tube is that you don't have to be under the vehicle and you can put your entire weight into pumping this Right, onto the rear diff. As we saw earlier, water contamination. Get a load of this. Like chocolate boy. Sweet like chocolate. There's the magnetic plug on the rear diff as well. Not too bad, no big chunks. That's good. So I'm just pointing out here that there is a little bit of a drip coming from the join from the hose to the hook spout I guess that's a factor of the amount of pressure I'm having to put into this because it's quite thick and quite thick liquid and not particularly warm outside um, it is kind of seeping through a bit I'll keep an eye on that I may try and modify it a bit if, if uh, necessary or, or warm the oil up in future you can see the spring in the hose you can see the amount of force going through, the spring gets sprung down, pushed along in the tube. Just had to move the camera a bit there. That was the rear diff done all 2.7 was it like 2.6 liters i think you end up putting in and um compared to 10 minutes squeezing a squeezy bottle that was incredible that is absolutely incredible it's almost a pleasure to do this i found that it does drip even though it's got a revert a return ball valve on the end of the thing it does dribble a little bit so if you just tip it up when you move it back to the bottle it it's fine I did say that you keep it in containers. This is what I'm going to do next is put the transfer box in. So I do need to transfer this back out, back into the bottle. And so I can put the 75W90 in. I haven't got a second container at the moment, but I think in future it's something I might look into. This isn't the full transfer box. I've already done a bit of it by this point, but you can see the lighter color of the oil for the transfer box and how much easier it is just to change in five W's from 80 to 75 makes it, makes it almost a breeze. And the real benefit here, as again, this part, this tube being long enough to do this outside the vehicle is incredible. You can't necessarily see when it starts dribbling out. I've elected to sort of pump it a bit. It's not really, not really that easy to do it when because this won't fit under the vehicle. The the pumping action it just won't fit under the vehicle. So once it starts dribbling, though, you know when the you know when the oil's at the level. That's how it fits into the 
transfer box filler. It's a little bit tight, to be honest, because you've got to get it in an angle and just a bit of oil seepage around the edges there. But on the whole, we went very quickly. So there we go. Job done. Three transmission units done. Just give it a clean up. I think I'll leave this oil in here. And uh, so I'll do the transfer box first time next time round. There is a bit of oil seepage. I mean, the other pumps have had it as well, but this is quite easy to um, to clean up. It's not really a big deal. And there's not really any mess anywhere else. There's, like I have cardboard down, but it's not gone anywhere. In case you did want to drain the pump fully and leave it clear, then I found the best way. Put the pump up high, put the pipe all the way down, and just got to kind of pump it down into a container. Let gravity do its work, and uh, it will push the air through. Seems to work quite well. So, in summary, this pump, it has changed my life to the extent that I almost want to do oil changes. It's incredible. Uh, after 10 years of ownership, having been through several different pump varieties, different methods, and having done this job, oh, I can't even remember how many times on two different vehicles. It, uh, it really makes things a breeze. Um, you see just a bit of the oil at the top here, but it's got an O-ring. It keeps it safe. I'd be happy to just put this away and it would keep the oil in good condition. This oil coming out of the connection here, something I'll monitor in future. It seems that all pumps have got a problem with this. I don't know if an utterly clean and you know non-leaking kind of tube pump system actually exists, but this is a professional thing and I can it's really nicely made and just feels like you're doing the job as efficiently as you can. As I've said, this pump isn't cheap. It's probably cost me about 100 quid for all this. There are other pumps available on the market. I'm not reviewing those because I don't have them. And uh, uh, I elected to go this one because it was nice and compact. I like the fact that you can you can have different containers with different oils and just kind of swap the things over. Um, because draining the oil back into the back into the original container is something that, that can be a bit um, fiddly. Um, and it's a damn sight better than that god-awful ugly pump I started this review with. Anyway, I hope you found all of this interesting and or useful. If you're considering buying one of these pumps, I would say go for it. It'll change your life. Give us a thumbs up if you liked my video style and uh, my American accents. I tend to butcher every accent I do, but there we go. Subscribe for more Land Rover related content. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.